Hey everyone, Gary from Peacekeepers Army here again. Uh, finally finished a, oh, I'll say an installation that I've been working on for quite some time. This was originally, and it still is, a Gary Morris based uh, custom lightsaber. Um, from what I understand, it went from him to an owner, and uh, that owner sent it to somebody else. I believe it was Patrick Cargill, um, who kind of, I'll say, polished it up a bit. Uh, smoothed out a lot of the uh, outside to make it look more fluid and then uh, polish it to make it more shiny and then from there it went to a new owner uh, my current customer who wanted me to change out the internals which were um, an older prism board and uh, inhilt led and a flat premium speaker so um, there were two crystals in here now it only has one uh, the second one was inside the hilt or the handle, um, I wasn't a big fan of that and the client didn't have a, uh, a desire to keep that and in order to get a bigger 18650 battery in there with a full 20 millimeter base speaker, um, I cut that from the program. So uh, originally this had a uh, switch here and a uh, auxiliary switch on the back side. Um, I wasn't a big fan of that. So for the basis, the, the client had me um, do what I think would work well for the saber. His main things were he wants it to be an heirloom lightsaber from uh, basically a, a Jedi that left the order a long time ago and the, the lightsaber was handed down in the family for generations. So it was well kept, it was used, um, and it's old. So I, got, I didn't like the placement of the switch. It was too far down the hilt um, in terms of leverage and it just made it really heavy on the front end when you have a blade. So I moved those switches up closer near the emitter and I put an accent LED in here which you can see it kind of pulsing right now and I took a piece from the original blade plug, um, it had a little jewel on top which you can see and put that over the accent LED and it, it's really nice. The color of the jewel really kind of changes the color of the LED um, so when that changes during functioning of the saber it, it makes really cool shades of color which accent it very well and I just um, plugged the back hole with a uh, grub screw. I completely redesigned much of the structure on the inside of the hilt uh, mostly in the crystal chamber. Um, in my opinion it was a little too cluttered with um, not very clean aesthetics on the inside and it was also wasn't very stable in terms of the way this works is this this piece right here is a single piece and it slides over the brass insert which is held on by about a quarter inch of uh, overlap right here um, with the rest of this being a solid piece apart from the handle. So I further secured the uh, the quarter inch piece by making two new uh, crystal holders from scratch I machined them um, with a little bit more real estate for the uh, countersunk screw on the inside which is not visible to hold it in place so it's a bit more stable and I added glue on the bottom too as well again not seen just to make it a little bit more stable um, I switched out the very small brass rods or uh, tubes for uh, thicker copper ones so that um, bigger uh, neopixel wire neo neopixel wires there we go can uh, fit all the way up through there so you can kind of see my crystal chamber inserts in there. Um, and that's pretty much it for that. Uh, I made this blade plug. Uh, this was uh, this has a Solos Hold um, Graflex uh, uh, replica uh, blade plug in a 7 8 blade with a custom machine that I did um, outer sleeve for the 7 8 blade so that there's a, a core of shine through as opposed to um, all the way. So uh, for example, I'll uh, just to turn it on so you can kind of see that. So the blade plug is um, kind of in the center with a sleeve around it for a, a one inch sleeve to fit in the blade holder. So it looks really good. It has the same springy thing and it just barely goes over the top like that just to give it that more three dimensional realistic um, effect. Uh, so here are the new switches, which Clint uh, helped me out with from SolidWorks Sabers. Um, so there's two plungers right here. I made the brass plungers myself um, 
just because the original ones, uh, I had to make a couple adjustments um, from the parts that I got from Clint. Uh, no big deal. It just took a little bit to get, because I wanted to get the click just right and the height just right so you weren't having to really, like use a fingernail to get in there. Um, and I, I overcut the ones that he supplied, so I had to remake them myself. Um, I replaced the top, there was another screw here which didn't align with the hole on the inside, so I just drilled it out completely. This is not a thumb screw, it is glued in. Um, however, I, I did knurl it and I, and I just did some aesthetic design to make it look nice and I tried to match it as best I could with the rest of the brass on the saber. Uh, this is, screw is solely holding on uh, the top piece right here um, and it secures it very well. So there's the back grubs through there. So power is on this side and auxiliary is on this side. It, put, it, gets, it gives it a nice, a better platform for holding it. You kind of cover the crystal chamber, but that's not a, a really big deal. Most crystal chambers you don't see while you're using it anyways. Um, but this has a fully exposed crystal core, which is nice. Uh, so you hit the button, uh, the left button for power on and then the uh, right button for, uh, well, pretty much everything else. Um, I'll have a document for the owner on how the switches work. It right now is using a Fernando's switch set because it is the new 4.3 uh, Profi OS on here, which is still in beta, but I haven't run into any major issues. So uh, that's pretty much it for the top half. Bottom half, uh, it was too short. There was a much shorter piece originally on here. Um, and to get the 18650 battery and the bigger speaker, we had to extend it. So I had Clint also make a really nice brass uh, sleeve on the inside, which I'll show in a minute. And um, to extend it, that made it longer. And then I bought a custom saber shop, uh, just a blank piece uh, handle cover, which I had Joss Rose put this awesome uh, brown leather wrap on. Originally it was, uh, like I said, it was shorter and it had a black leather wrap. To me, it didn't feel old Republic-ish, um, more Sithy or on the Sith side of the spectrum, and this uh, hilt is supposed to be kind of uh, in between, in the middle type of thing. In the middle, I'm the one in the middle. Um, so we extended that, put the leather wrap on, and then we weren't sure what to do for the uh, belt retention. I like the look of D-rings because that has a more ancient feel to me, in my opinion, even though technically the cover tech were older than the D-rings in terms of the movies. Um, but he said, go with what you feel. I remember one of these, I think it was on a, a Coda build I, I got, and I'm sorry, but I can't forget, or I forget who, who made it. Um, so with my new milling machine, I decided to make one myself. So I took a cover tech, I milled out a very smooth channel all the way through, and then I took a D-ring, which was originally for a Graflex replica, I believe, um, cut it, squeezed it down, and mounted it. So now it has the option for both. In my opinion, it kind of gives that old feel while, while still being new or uh, uh, modernized, so to speak, in terms of maybe the family um, kept the Sabre up to date with the new technology. Um, so if you want, it does work for both cover tech belt clips and D, um, standard uh, D-ring clips as well. So that's how that works there. So taking this apart, uh, oh, and just to, for credit, credit where it's due. Uh, Clint did make the brass piece here. It was originally supposed to go somewhere else, but um, I kind of altered it. I drilled a hole through, or a bigger hole through the center for light shining through, and I uh, faced off the top because it was a little bit more cone-shaped such that this uh, gem or jewel could go on there. Uh, so he made it. I altered it. Uh, props to him for making the original piece. And then this is the new sleeve that he made. He did a fantastic job. Uh, I did do the weathering on it and I did turn it down a little bit uh, as it was a little too uh, large to fit through the, the sleeve here still. So he did really nice uh, subtle, subtle tapering right here as well as uh, the knurling on the inside. There was a bit more knurling down on this end. However, when I turned it down, unfortunately, it did lose the, uh, the effect there. Um, so I wanted to keep this somewhat clean, so I gave it the brushed, weathered look for the brass while keeping the aluminum pretty spotless. Um, another custom piece I made is this one right here. Uh, the original recharge port was here, and I covered this, uh, the, basically looking at the battery wrapped in chrome tape and um, a nice mesh, one of my favorite mesh material to use in here. You might have seen it on my Blind Knight build. 
So uh, I made this custom piece, which is actually threaded for the recharge port. So the brass piece is glued onto the body uh, with stupid heart or uh, really good glue, basically. And then the recharge port itself is screwed into it. So if for whatever reason it needs to be redone, you don't have to take, you don't have to unglue everything. You can just unscrew the uh, recharge port once you snip the wires. Um, I had this laying around. I do, don't think it was from the original build here, but if it was, then okay, it's coming back. Otherwise, uh, it fit the aesthetic really well. In terms of that, if you want, you can uh, drill a little hole in it so you can do the twist method, but honestly, it's just better to uh, pop it out. You can get it right. right now. Right uh, hole. And then uh, go from there. Drill the retention screw right there. The bottom cap is attached to the sleeve and uh, the speaker is attached to the inner core. So you can pull this off completely if you remove the grub screw all the way. It will catch on other pieces if you don't remove the grub screw all the way and getting it. You don't need to pull this off unless you're updating the board. Um, other than that, you have access to your recharge port right there and that is all you need. But if you do want to access your board, you can take a small, uh, this is a 440 grub screw. So those are pretty standard. Uh, you just pull this off until it gets loose. Uh, you don't need to pull it all the way out. Uh, you just want to carefully twist it just until it gets past the uh, the board right there. And then you can uh, lift it out. It does stick right to the inside of the, the battery. Um, so you really have to be careful when, when doing that though. Uh, you don't want to rip the SD card off or anything like that. And, like, there's hardly any room inside this hilt. It wasn't designed for that big of a battery. It was designed for a smaller battery, but we uh, work with what we got. So um, the cords are pretty safe, or the cables are pretty safe. You don't have to worry about, you shouldn't have to worry about them uh, snapping off or anything. I have them routed down in this uh, channel down here. So as long as you're not yanking this out, then you're not gonna have any problems. Just lift it up a little bit. You have access to both the SD card and the uh, USB port. And the entire board, as you can see, is uh, heat shrunk, so uh, there will be no uh, shorting of the board. I also have a little bit of extra black electrical tape on here just to further isolate the already self-isolated uh, recharge port, just so that there's no accidental shortage whatsoever. Battery is hardwired. There is absolutely no way to make a quick disconnect or uh, use contacts in there. Simply no room for it. Um, so that is a little bit of a bummer, but like I said, quick, easy access to the recharge port and uh, it's good to go. You can see a plastic speaker holder right here that Clint made. Um, again, I altered it a little to make it fit a little bit better. Um, so that's permanently attached to the inner aluminum core. So if you want, you can take this grub screw all the way out, slide this all the way off to look at it, but unless something's wrong, you'll never have to take it further past this. Um, and apart from that, that's that's pretty much it. Um, right now it's using a few of Fernando's blade styles. Um, get this. So you want to put this pretty much all the way up against the wall, make sure you're not pinching any of the wires. And then uh, close this down. And then the, the uh, this will kind of keep it in place. Line this up with the center-ish of that circle. And then Tighten it down, not going anywhere. And just to show you what the uh, blade plug looks like, I think I cut myself off and I don't remember what I was talking about, so I apologize. So here's the blade plug. So I uh, turned down and bored out the blade plug so it fit the seven eights and uh, the light shines through the ring on the center. So it turned out really nice. Um, I'm happy with it. And I believe the owner will as well. So he pretty much had me do everything apart from a couple um, insistences um, without him seeing it. So when I show him actually today, this saber, it'll be the first time he's seen it since he's had it. Um, so it'll be really cool. I'm excited to show him and uh, I think he's really going to like it. This does have a few different colors on it. General Crow, you're being relieved of duty. I'm all the Jedi. All the sound fonts are from Kyberphonic. He bought, um, I recommended him. Uh, Kyberphonic is one of my favorite font makers. I pretty much use it exclusively. Um, with the exception of a few very specialty ones. Uh, so he bought a bunch of them from him and then um, had me install them. Second sister. You ever hear the tragedy of... Ray Scott.
Skywalker. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Just to kind of let's see. So just to show, you can see I'm trying. I just realized rotating it doesn't really. So I'm going to rotate it around. It does have the color wheel. Um, so now it's a different color, and this changes color too, but. Right now it's mimicking the crystal, but because of the color of the gem, it's a slightly different shade. So this probably isn't the best example, but uh, let's see. Oh, that's a good one right there. So you can see it's supposed to be this color here, but because of the, it's, it's really nice kind of blood orange shining through. And uh, honestly, I really like this feature of the hilt. I might have to incorporate it in other things. So just to kind of get another shot inside the crystal chamber itself. So it has the brass covering, then copper, uh, slightly weathered copper piping, and then a top and bottom aluminum. Before it was messy, it had like these claws that reached down and uh, held the crystal. I wasn't a big fan of that. Um, so I just cleaned it up again, or cleaned it up a bit and made it a little bit more clean. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, the only grub screw you'll have to worry about is this one and when you want to change your board or change the settings on your board. Uh, otherwise, all you have to do is have a kill key, screw this guy on, and then have a Allen wrench for the uh, blade plug. This is NeoPixel, and oh, and for the shine through, it does have stock MPXL LEDs or uh, pins. So. That's pretty much it uh, for Chris. I hope you enjoy this, and I will see you guys on the next uh, build. I got quite a few coming up, and uh, see you guys on the next one.